In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. We plug into that spirit of prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Satara Bahaye Kahaye, Ikorobo Sanda Rabahati La Maha. We allow the flow of the Holy Ghost to begin to flow right now. Ikanda Reko Saya Rabahashi Taha. We allow your authority to begin to flow right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name Ila la 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 bordo bo shatara la mahaye. Ila la 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 bordo bo shatala la mahaye. Le mando lo 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 toto ye. Le mando lo bo shatala la 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 mando lo bo koto ye. Lo rama mando lo koto lo 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 bordia tala bahaye. In the name of Jesus, Father, your spirit knows what to pray for. Lord, your word says we know not what we should pray for. But Lord, your spirit, it makes intercession for us. We allow the spirit of God to begin to make intercession for us right now. Lord, we don't know the needs to pray for without your spirit. We don't know, oh Lord, what to pray for unless you do it through us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lobo koria la bahashi talabahaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let us flow in the Spirit tonight. Lord, let us not be, O oh Lord, powered by emotion tonight. Let us not, O oh Lord, move off of emotion or operate off of emotion, God. But let there be a flow of the Holy Ghost, O oh Lord, that is evident in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to be apostolic. If it's not in your word, O oh Lord, we do not want any part of it. If your word doesn't command it, O oh Lord, we don't want it. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, if it's not in the book, Father, we don't want it, O oh God. We only want what you have for us, O oh God. We want, O oh Lord, all of it, O oh Lord, in your word. In the name of Jesus, we're willing to travel deep in the spirit this night. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you, God. We worship you tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lead, O oh God. Guide, O oh Lord, we rely upon you. We rely upon you, Lord, this evening. And every evening, O oh God, and every day, Lord. Every conscious waking moment, Father, lead us as your body, O oh God, on the earth. In the name of Jesus. Yea, and the Ranamo Kotori and the Labaka Sate. Yori and the Labo Kotori and the Labaka Sate. Yea, and Amashanda Labahai. I release your anointing in this place, God, upon your people. Upon those that are watching, O oh God, upon those that are engaged in their spirit. Whatever they may be, O oh Lord, you would draw them, O oh God. That you would draw them, Lord, that they may know, Father, that the hour, Lord, is coming. The urgency is here, O oh God, that we become the body of Christ on the earth. In the name of Jesus, that we put everything, Lord, in this. Every energy, Lord, every resources, God. Every effort, O oh Lord, every thought, every time, O oh God, Ike and Asata. For the night will surely come, Lord, and no man can work. Help us, Lord God, to do more. Empower us, O oh God, to do more, O oh Lord. Empower us, O oh God, to be your body on the earth. Send us, Father. Send us, O oh Lord. I loose your covering upon your people. I loose your covering upon your people this evening, oh God. Cloak us, oh Lord. Cover us, oh God, with your spirit. Cover us with your breastplate of righteousness, Lord. God, cover us, O oh Lord, with the armor. Your armor, oh Lord, that we may put on Christ. In the name of Jesus I lose, so Lord, a desire upon your people, O oh God, uh, to be a peculiar, Lord, to be different, O oh God, to realize that we are different, Father. That we have a different mission, Lord, a different lifestyle that matches the mission that you've given us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lose your drawing power, O oh God. Lord, we stand on your word, the settled word. God, the word that's already been written and declared, that you be, if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you, O oh God. You have been lifted up, Lord, suspended between heaven and earth on the cross. Draw all men unto you, Lord. Draw all men, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Yorobo Kotoranda Lamahaya Nakata Lamahaya Nasatai. Lord, go before us, Father. Go before us, O oh God. Pave a highway for your people, Lord. The wayfaring men, a highway, O oh God. Lord, where there's no predators, O oh King. Beyond the reach of the adversary, O oh God, conscious of what you have released in the atmosphere of the church, in the atmosphere of our lives, God, individually and collectively as a body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, O God. Oh, that highway, I lose the watering of the seed. Lord, I lose your love that can be felt, O King. That would constrain us. Lord, that would propel us, that would motivate us, God. To go beyond our personalities, O Lord. To go beyond, O God, and reach beyond where we're capable. Out of our own abilities, O God. But empowered by you. Give more grace, O Lord. Give more empowerment, O God, unto the humble. We humble ourselves under the mighty hands of the living God. For you're exalting us in this due season that is upon us right now. Yay, I lose your empowerment, your grace more than ever before, oh God. Lord, I seek to save, Lord, that which was lost. Ye Lamahai, as you have given us meaning in this life, oh God, as your mission becomes our mission, as it gives us meaning, oh Lord, something to live for, something to die for, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yorobosoto Lamanahayadakate. I lose divine revelation upon your body. I lose your angelic host, O oh God, to surround us, to encamp around us those that reverence your name, that fear your name, that bear your name, that seek your presence, that longs for your presence, O oh God. Yea, I lose the signs. I lose the wonders to follow us who believe God. We believe in you, O Lord. Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Lord, you are the great I am, capable of doing exceeding. Oh, capable of doing abundantly above all that we ask. Somebody begin to ask according to the will of the Lord. Somebody begin to pray according to the will of the Lord. Not my will, oh God. Lord, not my words, but yours in Jesus' name. Yay, andaria site anase. Yay, andara la bosik andaria anase. In Jesus' name, change us, Father, to become your image on the earth, O oh God. Lord, you did not allow any graven image except the one that you have created. Fashion out of your own hands, your body, your people on the earth, that we may reflect your image, O Lord, created in the image of God. That where we go, they may see Jesus Christ. That where your body is, your people are, that they may see a reflection of you, O Lord. Let your love be felt through us. Let your love be sensed through us, O oh God. Let the difference be sensed, Lord, with the spirits that are in the world, both human, O oh Lord, oh, and supernatural, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yandaranamokotoranda lamasata lasate. 
Yay, anasi tele. Iorobo koto randa la mahai. We worship you, O God. We worship you, O King. I lose, O God, your will here. I lose your healings here. I lose your word here right now, O God. I lose your direction and instructions upon us. Let it be heard. Give us ears to hear, Lord. Let us hear right now from heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Loboroko Torondo Loboso. Yanda Laboko Toranda Lama Satala. Somebody begin to bind resistance in Jesus' name. Both in your lives and the body. Oh, the resistance from the adversary against the mission of Christ of seeking and saving that which was lost. Father, you've instructed us to bind and to loose things on the earth. What you have already predetermined to be bound already in heaven. Let it be so on the earth. What you have predetermined, O God. What you've already released from heaven into the atmosphere in the earth. Lord, exerting pressure from the adversary. Let it be loose on the earth in the name of Jesus. There's a loosing of the will of God happening right now. There's a loosing of the drawing power of God happening right now. Yay, kata ye, drokasa na haye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it is you, O Lord, that we've sensed. It is your anointing that's carrying us, O God. It is your power, your grace, oh, that we feel right now in Jesus' name. You have loosed the reaping season, oh God, upon your body, upon the lighthouse, upon in Buena Park, oh Lord, you have loosed the reaping season. I loose it in Jesus' name. I loose it in Jesus' name. Somebody believe with me right now, it's reaping time. Come on, somebody begin to release your faith. It's reaping time. Oh, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Everywhere, oh Lord. Everywhere we go, oh God. Oh, to sense it, oh God, to reap. To reap even things in areas we have not sowed. Lord, for you send us into areas reaping things we have not labored upon, bestowing, oh God, increase. In areas, oh Lord, that was not, oh God, from us, from our labor through you. But we reap just the same in Jesus' name. Come on, would you believe right now for your miracle? The Lord is asking, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Why don't you begin to measure the greatness of your God against the things that you're thinking about and facing in the name of Jesus? Yori anda yo sanda yori atayo ye kaye anda site I speak to the soil, O oh Lord, to bring forth. 
earth. I speak to the soil and the seed, oh God, to begin a bud in Jesus' name. I speak to what's been implanted in the soil, in the darkness of trials, oh Lord, to begin to bring forth. As it starts in the embryo, oh God, as it begin to take root, oh Lord, and to break out, oh God, into the light in the name of Jesus Christ. To grow, oh Lord, to become, oh God, trees. Oh, the planting of the Lord, that you might be glorified. I lose the resources needed, oh God, for your body to be mobilized as laborers in your harvest field. In the name of Jesus, I lose it right now, that process, God. Lord, to be completed this year. To be completed by the end of this year, Lord, the resources needed. In the name of Jesus, I loose it upon the atmosphere of the church. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the in Jesus' name, I lose healing in this place. If you need strength in your body, if you need a healing touch, would you just lift up your hands where you're at and begin to believe, Father, I release that healing touch that you have already, O oh Lord, commanded to be in this place right here, right now, with the angels of the Lord ministering spirits to us, for us, the heirs of salvation. Why don't you begin to worship the Lord as you receive your healing? Why do you begin to lift up your voice and you receive your miracle? A touch from heaven in Jesus' name. Yay! It is so, O oh God. It is so, O oh Lord. By your stripes we are healed, past tense. It is done. Oh, Rikanda Lamasata, for he is the God that healeth all thy diseases. It is done both physically, oh, emotionally and mentally in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody worship him right now in Jesus' name. Just begin to nurture that atmosphere that's already here. Begin to explore what God has opened for you. For he loves you. He loves you in Jesus' name. He is love. Everything that he does is motivated by love because he is love. There's nothing that happens to you. No, that is not motivated by the love of God. It's the love of God implanted, given unto us by the receiving of his spirit. Shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The love of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yara la bocotare and a settele. Yaranda la bocotori and a leke settele. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you pray with me right now? Oh, for our service with the Magianis, that God would begin to give us, oh, divine favor leading up to it, Lord. That we may encounter people, oh God, that would commit. 
to come to the house of the Lord and be converted. Oh, that we would cross paths, oh Lord, with people. Lord, people that you're sending. People that you've already been dealing with. Hungry people, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, would you come against that resistance that you feel right now? That God will begin to lead us to hungry people. That the doors will be open for us to reach the hungry, oh Lord, the thirsty, oh God. Draw them to us and draw us to them. There it is, an opening in the spirit. There it is, proclaiming with faith. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, Yo riande ke anasata la maha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, Father. Oh, send your word, oh God. Send your rhema, oh Lord. The creative power behind it. The power behind it, oh God. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Would you pray right now for people that you're reaching for? Would you pray for your family, your friends? Would you pray that God would begin to give you words, words of wisdom that begin to speak to them? Oh, under the leading, the unction of the Holy Ghost, that He may bring forth fruit, that your Father may be glorified. Yara la bocota randa yana y que te le. Yo rianda la quitele, anda le que se te le, anda yana si te le. Lo randa la yere que te le, anda satala. Come on, would you begin to pray for your family, for your friends, that God will give you an opportunity to plant the word. In Jesus' name, they are your harvest field. They are your world. Go into all the world and preach and teach and proclaim and plant the seed of the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I speak to the soil that seems to be hardened, oh God. It just seems that way. Let the hammer of the word of God begin, oh Lord, to soften the hearts of people. Soften the hearts of our family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every friend, oh God. Every family, oh Lord. Every backslider, oh God. Every person that ever darkened the doors of the church, oh Lord. Every person that visited, oh God, and been to the connect groups, oh Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus for them. I pray for their souls. I lose the culmination of your dealings with them, oh God, that they would now begin to be a part of the labor of the kingdom, oh Lord. Being reaped, oh God, right now in Jesus' name. Would you begin to bind hindrances? Oh, that would hinder you from reaching out. Come on, would you begin to bind hindrances that come against you? You know what they are. Yeah, kandala la bossa. Begin to bind those hindrances in Jesus' name. Begin to believe in the power of the Lord that's in you. Oh, the mighty God in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. And you're glorified, God, that we bear much fruit. That's how you're glorified in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, I send angels unto them, O Lord. I send angels into their homes. I send angels to work places. I release angels during their leisure time, their downtime, oh God. As you begin to deal with them even more so, Father. In the name of Chikata Norotoye. Yea, Andorobo Sotoloye. Isalakata Naye Ka. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God is doing so many things right now. God is releasing so many things right now that it is not possible for us to articulate in our native tongue. Would you just begin to speak in tongues right now? And as you pray in tongues, believing that God is speaking things into existence. As you speak in tongues right now, the Spirit is making intercession through you, His body. Oh, ka na ye kete anayo no sote. He's accomplishing much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous forgiven person accomplishes a lot. It's accomplishing a lot right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yo roto la manana na katalamahai. I anda la boko toranda la masanda la bahai. Would you release your faith right now? Would you just begin to believe in Jesus' name? Just begin to believe right now. Oh, the things that you prayed for and the things that the Spirit of God has uttered through you. Begin to believe that He can do exceeding abundantly above all that you have asked. Have you thought about, according to the grace, the Holy Ghost power that's in you, be glory in the church, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God as we get ready to worship in song. Would you just begin to prepare your heart right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I've been thinking and studying about this great God that we serve. This eternal God, this infinite God. Amen. And God began to deal with me to compare him, if you would, with the things that we go through in life. We need to have a revelation of how big, but that's not even the right word, how powerful, how great our God is. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it talks about God creating the world through the Word or through the Logos. Because God is so immense, if you would, that the only way that He could participate in this dimension that we have is being the God or the Word manifest in flesh, the Logos becoming a man. Because God is so immense that He cannot be measured. And He cannot be involved in our lives except He manifests Himself. Limiting Himself, if you would, to the man Christ Jesus. Having all the fullness of God at the same time. It would be the same as you and I trying to 
participate in the life of an ant. It is impossible unless we become like one. And that's how big God is. All things were created by Him. The Genesis just simply states that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Everything is in Him and for Him. And when you begin to realize how immense God is, and you compare it to whatever you're facing, whatever your problem is, whatever your situation is, it becomes minuscule. It becomes irrelevant. Oh, it becomes something that is just not even compared to what God can do. In the name of Jesus, I feel faith in this house. Oh, and so the Bible says that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think, according to the power, the grace that's already in you. Would you begin to believe right now in Jesus' name? Let's worship Him.
Psalms 121 I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber or sleep behold he that keepeth Israel or God's people the church shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. That's the lyrics of this second verse. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Somebody worship him right now. He is a covenant keeping God. Keeping covenant of them that love him for a thousand generations.
flood will treat me. The Lord is my anchor. Somebody believe that. The sun won't smite me, and the moon it will not hurt me. The flood won't sweep me. The Lord is my anchor. The covenant keeping In the name God. of Jesus, would you thank him that he has you bound himself to you? The covenant keeping God. That he has obligated himself to Jesus, you, the body of Christ. The covenant keeping God. Promising even to come. Jesus, to come back for you and I. The covenant keeping that where he is, we will be also. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And whatever we go through from this dimension to the next, God promises to preserve our coming in and our coming out, our going in and our going out from this time. Somebody believe that right now. From this time, this great, immeasurable God, this great, immense God that created everything, He can do anything. For nothing is too hard for your God. Yes. Somebody just begin to believe. Just begin to believe. Nothing is impossible. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. The Bible tries so hard to describe the Lord, describe Jehovah, describe this God that is from everlasting to everlasting. Describe him as infinite, beholding the end from the beginning, the Alpha and Omega. But when God was asked by Moses, who do I say sent me? This is how God describes himself. He describes himself as I am. I am is as big as it gets. Whatever it is that you're facing, I am. Both now and in the future, He is constant. He is reliable. He is faithful. The I am. The great I am. Hallelujah. Would you worship Him right now? And would you let the great I am expand your faith? In the name of Jesus, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. For my help is in the name of the Lord. Oh, the Lord that keepeth Israel. The Lord that never sleeps nor slumbers. The sun will not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. He's a covenant keeping God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In your prayer time, in your study time, I want to encourage you to just begin to pray and let God give you a revelation how awesome, how immense He is. And when He begins to give you a revelation, how huge, how immense, how great God is. Everything that you and I will ever face becomes very small, very insignificant. Then you, can, you and I can declare nothing is impossible to them that believe. Would you believe right now nothing is impossible? What you see, what you think, what you deem impossible, it is nothing compared to this great mighty God, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Keep praying for the service that's coming up on the 25th with the Magianis. Also, God has opened miraculously Saddleback College. We're going to be outreaching over at Saddleback College. We thank God for an open door. Amen. That's Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 9 a.m. to 12 noon on the 20th and 21st. And 27th to 28th, we're believing God is going to do something in Jesus. I'm just going to believe God is going to draw the hungry and perhaps even fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I've asked Brother Dylan to come and teach tonight. Amen. So glad for what the Lord is doing. But before he does that, I feel like there's testimonies in the house, perhaps. And if you've got a word, an encouraging testimony, or maybe something that you just want to declare to be the will of God, uh, we have the microphone right here. I want to give it to somebody that want to encourage in the name of Jesus. The cordless mic right there, please, in Jesus' name. As we're doing that, be a prize of our connect groups this Thursday, tomorrow. Mission Viejo, and then September 16, this Friday, is San Clemente. We're going to switch that up in Jesus' name. This Tuesday, right? That was yesterday. Me and um, Sister Lorraine went in our neighborhood, and we did an outreach. Amen. Um, and But first of all, we ministered to Sister Grace because she had a, some back pain, so she went. we went to her house prayed um, healing in Jesus name and brother Dylan came along with us um, and then we were led to another neighbor wherein um, I met the first time if you remember her name's Marianne but she wasn't the one who opened the door it was her best friend who was there I believe I, if her name if I can remember her name Mar Mar Maricel I think but I got to talk to her we got to talk to her got to talk about church and you know how you want to sow the seed. So I, I put in the Holy Spirit in there, like, please come. You'll feel the Spirit of God. You know, the Word of God is true. However, I could sow the seed. It wasn't a Bible study. I wanted to do it. Remember, the card, the invitation is just a conversational piece. But you sow the seed in there, and I did what I could. And, and I saw the hunger in her, and I said, hey, Maricel, is it possible can I get your phone number? And she gave me her number, amen. And so I'm, I'm going to pray um, for God's leading and um, for both her and her best friend, amen. And they're both Filipino in Jesus' name. And I'm just believing that God is doing his work, amen. If we go out there, amen, and do his will, he will guide us. He will lead us. He will give us the power to do his will in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody else that has a testimony that they want to share? Brother Paul. There you go. You can just take the mic. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. Uh, this Sunday, I had an opportunity to go over to my mom's house and uh, basically cross the street. There's, the, there's a friend that I've known for a long time, and his name is John Flemings. He's been our, uh, at our Connect Group one time, a couple months ago, and uh, I finally... We finally scheduled the Bible study this Sunday, last Sunday. And uh, we were there at my mom's house. And the thing is that, you know, I could, there's a twofold. Look, God is good. I mean, basically what he did was basically he and I had a Bible study for about two hours on do we need to be baptized in Jesus' name. First time used this, and it was so awesome. Basically, there's no chance that he could and having any kind of argument with this many scriptures basically I told him think about it in this way uh, if there's a one or two or more scriptures it's got to be supported or it's not it's a lie or it's a contradicting or it's not it doesn't support uh, the word so basically we talked about like three or four different scriptures as we went through supporting what I was telling him about the name of Jesus and him being baptized in the name of Jesus the power of the name and basically, he was bought. I mean, basically, he says, oh, I see. And then he says, let me study a little more. So I gave to him. And so he's going to study a little more because I fed him a lot. Two hours of it. And the best part was that after two hours of ministry, obviously, my mom got tired. She went to bed. She woke up. We were ending. She woke up and says, did he really like that? Was it really good? And I go, yes, mom. This is for you as well. And so basically, my mom left the window, my mom left the door open, and I walked right in and I said, Mom, I want you to know about the name of Jesus. So, church, I mean, God, if you if you are passionate, if you want to do this, God will be there with you. And He's gonna work through you. You don't even have to do anything. Two hours of this. 
I mean, you could get through this in half an hour, but we were there for two hours talking about this. I encourage you, you will be blessed more than ever with the joy that you feel knowing that you planted the seed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we thank God for that testimony? That was so powerful. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Are there any more testimonies? Brother Allen, if you can come up, and Brother David's going to give you the mic. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm not back there to check. Uh, so um, this is more of, uh, it's a healing testimony for somebody and also, um, I guess we would say, a chance to witness. Um, there's a, um, a contractor that I work with, close with, on a lot of different projects. And um, two and a half weeks ago uh, on Friday, uh, we were discuss our Thursday, and I said, "Hey, Tony, you know, um, is this what you want?" And I described the services that we would give them, and, and I said, "Do you, can I have the guys meet you to go over it because it was kind of complex?" And he's like, "No, you know, um, I have to go in for a CAT scan, and depending on how it goes." I may have to have brain surgery. It's just like, okay, you, you have a brain tumor and cancer. So um, sure enough, Monday came around. He went in for surgery um, because of he wasn't, somebody else called in his place. So, um, but the, on that Thursday, I said, oh, my God, you know, I'll pray for you. You know, um, you'll be okay. And, um so I was telling everybody else at work, like, hey, you know, did you hear about Tony? He's got a brain, a brain tumor, and he's out. So this guy Peter's filling in for him. And uh, sure enough, the last person that I, I told in my office, as soon as she walked out of the office, he called. <laughs> and he's like, I'm back at work. I was like, thank God, you know, because... Uh, that's pretty amazing to, to, because he's a, this is a contractor in construction, like, and not building a bathroom. I mean, building many hotels. So, um, yeah, uh, gotta give glory to God for answering prayers, and uh, it does help to stand in the gap. And uh, you don't always have to make a project. Uh, production out of it. You just need to be sincere and um, have the heart and uh, be willing to pray for someone. So, uh, thank you, God. And uh, he's doing good. He's got his titanium plates. <laughs> and it's gone. So. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else have a testimony? Sister Rachel. If you could come up here, please. Praise God. Okay, so the first thing is is that um, I won my unemployment appeal after like five months. Um, and um, obviously it wasn't myself that won. It was the Lord. I'm on my own in my own opinion. Of course, I am a meek person. I don't like conflict. I don't, I don't see the things the way that I maybe sometimes normal people do. And so sticking up for myself is really hard. But when you have a Lord that will stick up for you and give you the right people at the right time to encourage you, if you can just open your ears and your heart to what the Lord is doing and just follow through, even if it's not who you think you are, he, he fills in everything that you're not. And so it was a lesson from the Lord for me in patience and fortitude in that area fighting, um, weighing my options and understand. And then um, also 
I just want to give glory to God because I'm thankful for every single trial that he gives me because it arms me to pray beforehand for the people that I love and to be able to give them resources, biblical resources. The more I read the Bible, the more I see, dang, I'm just like almost everyone in there. And if it applies to them, it applies to me. And surely it applies to everyone else in my life. So I'm just thankful I've been able to uh, witness the way, not how everyone else here is saying that they do, but just witness what God has done for me, to them, and from the Bible, just to be able to show them, like, this it, this happened in the Bible, it happened to me, it can happen for you. So I just want to thank God for every single living thing that he's done to me, good or bad, because I wouldn't change it for anything, for anything. Praise God. anybody else that has a testimony here? Sister Edie. Yeah, yeah, of course. to his mom, so he, and I called, I don't know, it was like 1030, and he was still doing that Bible study, and um, I, he got home, I was kind of frustrated, because, you know, you know, it was 11 o'clock at night, and he walked in, and he came to me, and he gave me the answer, well, I was asking your mom about um, on Sunday morning, I, I didn't pray about it, I didn't mention anything to him, but he came right to me, and what I wanted to hear, and it was like just a miracle. It was just like I mean, I've never had anything like that before. Beautiful testimony. Amen. Is there anybody else that has a testimony here? Sister Jessica. Okay. In Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord, everybody that is in the house of God. Sister the Chicken Pastor wanted me to minister, and I really, the subject that the Lord gave me, he rarely um, gives me a lot of stuff in advance. Um, I don't know why he does it that way, it's just the way he does it, but this particular week, God had been speaking a lot of deep things. I was praying this morning, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm not a two-dimensional God. And I asked the Lord, what do you mean? What, is, what does that really mean? And so I said, can I look up the definition of two-dimensional? He said, yeah, go for it. And two-dimensional, that, that phrase, having or appearing to have length and breadth, but no depth, a two-dimension object. And the Lord was saying, I'm not a two-dimensional God because there's depth. And he was began to expound upon that point, and he said, there are levels or dimensions in me. It's, it's not just two-dimensional things where you see it's flat, but there's a depth to God. The Bible says, the deep calleth unto the deep. There, is, there are surface level things that we can kind of receive from God, but there are also deep level things we can receive from God. And the Lord began to speak to me about that subject of, of depth and deepness and he began to speak to me, and he showed me a scripture in Proverbs. It says, wisdom crieth without she. I'll say the address. Sorry, Brother Allen, I forgot. Pro Proverbs 1, 20 through 24. Wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the streets. 
She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? I'm a, I was going to read the whole thing, but I feel it just to stop right there. So many times we think God is not seeking after us, and we're the ones that are doing all the work. We think that we're so far from him, we have to try so hard to get to him. But we sometimes fail to realize he has been the one that has been drawing near to us and pulling himself closer to us this whole time. The Bible pastor mentioned it, I believe it was Sunday, that the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, you can enter into a place in spirit and in truth in worship where you are not just seeking God, but God is seeking you. You can enter into a, such a deep place where the Lord begins to find a man to make up the hedge and intercede for a lost city. I, wanna, I just feel led to speak something to you when we begin to pray and pastor begin to lead us. And when we begin to go into a, a spirit of warfare, and I saw in a vision, the Lord began to show me. And, and right when I saw that, I saw this warrior. And immediately the word strong man came to my mind. And so I said, okay. And what I saw was this strong man. This, is, this may be graphic, but for some reason this is how the Lord speaks to me. He showed me that strong man and its head was chopped off. And I go, whoa, that's that's." pretty brutal and he said there is a special authority that i've given you where the strong man in your city is not going to be able to defend itself against the kingdom of god its advancements and what he showed me was all of every single person in this room you were holding a sword and you were beginning to sever the mind or the head or the, the thing that allows the body parts to operate that was severed off completely so that the strong man of your city, your neighborhood, whatever, wherever you are, it was completely cut off, unable to defend itself. Just for a moment, I want to talk to you about what the Lord has, has spoken. You have to make room for God in order to experience deep places. If you give God 15 minutes, you'll get something, but it's not deep. You can even give God an hour, but if you look in the scripture in the gospels, the Bible equates that to the bare minimum. But I began to pray and I said, Lord, if, if, if 15 minutes, if an hour is not enough, what is it? What is it that you require? And he said, your will. Because when you give up your will, I can take you wherever I want to take you. When you give up, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. When you give up and surrender your will, God will begin to take you into deeper places in him. We're talking about deepness. We're talking about having depth in the word of God and in the spirit of God. If we're not willing to go deep, because like it was already mentioned, God's not two-dimensional. And if we have the revelation that he's not two-dimensional, but he has a depth in the name of Jesus. When you enter into prayer, you can travel so deep in God where there's not a cap, there's not a bottom. You can get so deep into prayer that you can think you've reached the end. But the moment you think there's a bottom, it doesn't even exist. Because God's wisdom, God's character, God's power, God's love. The moment you think you've reached the bottom and you've reached, reached okay, this is how deep I can go. God begins to remind you that there is no bottom. There is, there is no level that you can say, okay, this is as deep as I can go. You can only go as deep as you let God take you. 
God has the desire to take us deep. God has the desire to take us into, into places with him, into spiritual places, into sitting in heavenly places. But the problem is we're not willing sometimes to stay and dwell. I was talking to a friend of mine, I believe it was a couple of days ago, and we began to talk about that scripture, how it says sitting in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. And I told him, and I said, it's so powerful because if you sit down, that means you're going to stay a while. You guys are sitting down here because, you know, we're going to stay a while. And I promise you, we are going to have dinner soon if you haven't had it yet. I was talking to the Lord. I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to get that much time today. And I'm okay with that. But the this, this scripture in Proverbs how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hateth knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regardeth. Wisdom. Wisdom is calling out. Proverbs 27, 7. It says... The full soul loatheth on honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. You know what that means? Even though your flesh resists a word from God and it makes you uncomfortable, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. I don't know who this is for, but when your pastor tells you to do something that you don't necessarily like, to the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. I will be obedient. When God tells you to pray for that person and your flesh resists it and you don't want to do it, or he tells you to be bold in him to the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. It doesn't matter what God tells me to do. I want to get closer to him. To the hungry. Psalm 119, 102 through 103 also says, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I love how Bishop describes this scripture. I remember one, one time I was listening to Bishop Wright, and he began to talk about biscuits. And when you put biscuits or we, when you put honey on biscuits, when you get, I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. When you begin to drizzle the honey on the biscuit, and you begin to eat it, and how sweet it is, that's good. I'm thinking about, we might go to KFC after instead of Cane's. But when you, when you eat that biscuit, the honey, it just tastes so nice. Honey, it's so, it's, I almost said it's so powerful. It's so awesome because honey, it's, it's a natural sweetener. It's antibiotic. You hear that, folks? My God, I feel a witness in Jesus' name. Is this all right? We're, we're, getting, we're getting comfortable at home. This is my church home in Jesus' name. But the word of God declares, how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. When was the last time you tasted of the word of God? where it was sweeter than honey in your mouth. Come on, the Bible says the bread of life. When was the last time you sat down with the word of God and said, I am going. My God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, O Lord. Oh, we andara bahashe kaye remesi. Oh, lobo kura bahasataye. I was telling the Lord today, I said, God, I miss the moments where I could just sit down and not worry about a thing and just digest your word. I don't like to speed read. If we speed read just to fulfill our obligation, of, to say that we read the Bible, that we fulfilled our two or three chapters that day. I'm sorry, but 
that's not studying, that's religious obligation. But when we truly look at the word of God and we sit down and we sincerely ask, Lord, show me what the scriptures mean. I can't figure this out on my intellect. I can't figure out what it means through the flesh. I'm going to need your spirit to reveal it to me. I, I just have to go back to this, that, that, that verse, the full soul loatheth and honeycomb, but to the hungry soul. Every bitter thing is sweet. Are we still hungry like we used to be when we first were saved? Are we still hungry? Or, we, or have we become a full soul? Have we become so full and say, I've heard that message before. I'm all right. I've read this chapter of the Bible before. God can't speak anything more to me. I've already read this passage of scripture. That's all the revelation I'm going to get. But if you would realize what is the height, what is the length, what is the breadth of the riches of God, you would keep on going. You would keep on going. My God. In Jesus' name. What we hunger for. I remember a man of God said this phrase. You develop a desire for what you look at. I want you to examine yourself and ask yourself, what is the thing that you look at the most? Is it social media? Is it yourself in the mirror? God, I hope not. What is the thing that you behold the most? Because you develop a desire for what you look at. I didn't think we're going to go there, but Thank you, Lord, for that confirmation. If we read in Genesis 2, 16 through 17, the Lord's talking to Adam and he's telling him, I'll just read the scripture. And the Lord God, this is Genesis 2, 16 through 17. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I remember uh, I, was, I was looking and studying this one thing in Scripture. and About, I began to think, why did God place the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in that garden? Why couldn't he just like place it out of the garden where they couldn't get it? But a man of God, he, he began to speak a revelation about the scripture. And it was the reason why God placed that tree right there is because making a decision is the epitome of your desire. You choosing God. If, if, if you don't have a choice, you can't express that you have a desire. But when there is a choice that is involved, when, you, when God gave you a will... He gave you will because he wanted somebody that would love him back on their own and not just do it because they're forced to do it. So when you have a choice and when there is a choice involved, you can't express that you desire God if you don't have a choice. And so God placed that tree in the garden to see their choice. It was the epitome of their desire. Then deciding, you know what? I'm going to obey the command of the Lord. It reflected and it showed their desire for God. And in Genesis 3, we, we read an interesting twist of this story. Now the serpent, Genesis 3, 1 through 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now if you compare Genesis 2, 16 through 17 with this passage of scripture that we read, you will see that Eve did not correctly quote the commandment. And when you do not correctly know the word of God, you have just made yourself a target for the enemy to deceive you. Because when the enemy sees that you do not have any scripture to defend what you believe and what you think, 
he will be able to deceive you. Because in that scripture, it says, what, what the Lord commanded said, it just said, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But Eve said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So wait a minute. God didn't say the part about touching. And so it's either Eve did not correctly hear the commandment from Adam, or Adam did not correctly tell the commandment to Eve. And we could go to a whole theological discussion about whose fault it is. I don't really care about that. <laughs> I, I, I want to know, okay, God, what is the revelation behind this? And the revelation, one of them is when you... We're not going to go that direction. Genesis 3, 4 through 6. And the serpent said unto the women, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, notice this, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Some of you are saying, Dylan, you are just going off the walls. You are very unorganized. I just want to flow with the Spirit. I'm sorry. It, I love what Brother Sheldon says. It may look like scrambled eggs, but we're going to make an omelet. In Jesus name but if you notice the enemy targeted three specific things with Eve he targeted the lust of the flesh notice this scripture that it was good for food that's the lust of the flesh and that it was pleasant to the eyes that's the lust of the eyes and a treat to be desired to make one wise pride of life and it's interesting because First John 2, 15 through 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The enemy targeted these three things with Eve. One, the lust of the flesh. Two, the lust of the eyes, what you see, and the pride of life. And when I began to study this particular scripture, I wanted to know what the pride of life really meant. I didn't want to make an assumption or a guess and pretend to know what, I, what it meant. But I began to do some digging in the scripture and that Greek definition for the word pride in that phrase, pride of life, it says self-confidence, boasting pride. And the word life is bios in the Greek, the period of course or life, that which by life is sustained, resources, wealth, and goods. Can I tell you, the enemy will use the pride of life against you. Confidence in yourself, confidence in the goods that you have, confidence in your own self-sustainability. And if you don't believe that, God, that, that the enemy uses the pride of life, just look at how many people skip church because they're addicted to their job. It's the pride of life. It's the pride of life. And if we place confidence in ourself and in our wealth, in our goods, the Bible says you can only serve one master. And it's either going to be God, but you can't serve mammon and God. And the interesting thing is because the enemy told Adam and Eve, or at least told Eve, when you eat of the fruit, you will finally be like God. Can I tell you that was so far from the truth? Because Adam and Eve, Adam was made in the image of God. 
They walked and talked with them. In fact, they couldn't be more like God in that moment when they obeyed his will. And so for the enemy to see, you'll finally be like God was a total lie because they were in his presence. They walked with him. They heard his voice. They communed with him. And the enemy, he also uses that tactic to try to make you think, well, if you would just indulge in this sin, you'll get something that you can't get with God. But the Bible says that lust, the fleshly lust, it will pass away. Oh, but what does Psalm 1611 say? It says, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The sinful pleasures will pass away. But the pleasures that are at his right hand... They're forevermore. And so the enemy trying to tempt you and try to say, well, you should indulge in this sin. You should dabble in this sin. Well, here's the thing. That is temporary. The lust of the flesh will pass away. But here's the thing. You don't even realize it. But every time you tap into the spirit of prayer, God says there are pleasures at my right hand. And those pleasures don't have to end. Those pleasures are forevermore. And when you get into the presence of God, that's why the Bible says walk in the spirit and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because if you're experiencing the pleasures that are forevermore, how can you even want to desire something that is temporal, that is fake, that is not eternal? And so, Jesus' name. The enemy, he will always, he will always use these three things. He used some of them even when he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. But it will use the lust of the flesh, the cravings of our flesh, of what, we, of what the things we desire to have in our flesh, the lust of the eyes, the things that we can see. But I want to kind of touch on, on something that's very interesting in, in that chapter in Genesis where it says Eve saw, remember, this is, this is so powerful. The serpent didn't say that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to be desired to make one wise. Eve saw that, and Eve perceived that, that it was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. I believe one of the things that God is teaching a lot of us is to not try to figure out the word of God on our own. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8, 1, I believe, that pride puffeth up, or knowledge puffeth up. And it's interesting because that part where it says, to be desired to make one wise, if you're running your own life and you're not submitted to the will of God, and you're having confidence in yourself and in your wealth and in your accomplishments and in what you're doing on your own without God's empowerment, you have just entered into the trap of the pride of life. I remember something that the Lord began to deal with me. He began to speak to me. He said, you can't have self-confidence. You, can have con you can't have confidence in yourself. Because in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. You can think you can do it on your own. You can think you can have confidence in yourself. But in reality, you're imperfect without my spirit. You can't do it without me. And sometimes the reason, the majority of the reason why we fail is because we're doing it without God. We're doing it without his empowerment. But if we really want the spirit of God to empower us, we need to receive his grace, amen? We need to receive his grace. 
But also what keeps us in victory is recognizing the tactics of the enemy. I believe one of the discipleship courses or lessons is tactics of the enemy. And the reason why we do that is because when you can identify what the enemy is trying to attack you with, you will be able to, in your spirit to guard your heart over those things. And so what the Lord is doing this night, he is equipping you with the tactics of the enemy, not to say, oh, you're hopeless, but to let you know what the enemy is going to try to tempt you with. Because here's the thing. I could make the decision to preach my guts out and people can run, people can holler, people can jump. But if you are never changed, what good is that doing? And at the end of the day, if it's just emotion and no transformation, is it really a word from God? So if, if, peop, if you base the success of your ministry based off of response, it's not based on response. It's not based on whether that sister clapped her hands or not. It's not based on, okay, who, how many amens did I get from the back? It's about, did I do the will of God? Did I speak what he wanted me to speak? And so what the Lord is leaving with us tonight is three tactics that the enemy will try to tempt you with. It's, if you can write them down, write them down. Because if you identify these things, you will save yourself a lot of trouble. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus name I wonder if we could just pray for a minute I don't I don't feel the stoppage of the flow but I feel we just need to pray right now there's some things that that are buried within within us that God wants to bring to the surface and finally get out of the way why don't we just begin to do that right now in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I bind the spirit of condemnation off of your body right now and Lord I release your empowerment upon every single soul here the empowerment to say no to the flesh and yes to the spirit of God the empowerment to say yes Lord I want your word more than the sinful pleasures that are only temporary and not eternal yes Lord somebody just begin to say yes to God right now I say yes to your spirit I say yes to your spirit Lord and I say no to the pleasures of this world of this earth it will pass away why don't we just begin to worship him right now thank you Jesus come on some of you you need to lift that weight off of your shoulders come on you've been battling with things in your flesh but God is saying I want to give you the empowerment and the grace to say no to them come on come on I don't mean this in a condemning way. Keep on praying. But some of you, you go to service after service, but you still struggle in your flesh. There are still things that you have not conquered yet. And some of you, you still go home to giants and you still hold that sword wanting to slay them. And I speak to you in the Holy Ghost. The strong man of your city is not the only thing that God wants you to defeat. It is the sinful pleasures of your flesh that he wants you to crucify and die out to. Come on, we need to pray. This is not emotion. This is the spirit of the Lord right now. Come on, I don't care if the Lord doesn't let me speak longer. What the, what the Holy Ghost is doing right now is deep. Come on, somebody just focus on him right now. Come on, some of you, you battle your flesh more than you battle demonic spirits in prayer. And you can conquer them in the spirit. But there's a desire inside of you that says, I want to finally conquer this flesh. I don't want to go home alive in the flesh. I want to go home alive in the spirit and dead to the flesh. 
Come on. I don't want to just be alive in the spirit, but I want to be dead and mortify the deeds of this flesh. Just hear me for a moment. Just hear me for a moment. God's doing an awesome work. Jesus' name. Pastor, I feel the minister if that's okay. Just Jesus' name. Romans 8, 13, if you could please put that on the overhead. This is very important. Are you ready? God's about to deliver some of you right now. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. I have a word for somebody in this place right now. The same Spirit of God that empowers you to bind and loose things, that has allowed you to bind the strong man of your city, that has allowed you to bind the spirits in a false doctrine in this county, that same Spirit wants to take dominion and authority and through its empowerment, mortify the deeds of the body or the deeds of the flesh. The same spirit that binds and casts out devils is the same spirit that mortifies the deeds of the body. So I have hope for somebody in this room tonight. If you've conquered some demons in your life, if you've bound spirits when you prayed spiritual warfare, you have enough of the Holy Ghost to mortify the deeds of the body. Come on, if you believe that, I want you to just begin to stand to your feet. Uh, come on, you need to receive the victory. The same Spirit of God that empowers you in spiritual warfare is the same Spirit of God that will mortify the deeds of the body. Come on, Rabbi Shataya. The same empowerment that causes devils to flee and be cast out when you pray. It is the same spirit. Uh, uh, the spirit of God is not just effective in one area. The spirit of God is effective in whatever you deal with. Uh, Come on. It's not just effective in spiritual warfare. It's effective in battling the flesh. It's effective in crucifying the desires of the flesh. Some of you need to lay on this altar right now and begin to die out to some things. Come on, some of you, you need to die to some things right now. Come on, would you mortify the deeds of the body? Come on, if you want more fire of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to put more of that flesh on the altar. If you want more of the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life, you're going to have to lay more flesh down. If you want more fire in your sacrifice, you're going to need to crucify more flesh. Come on, I'm not trying to invoke a response, but the Holy Ghost is saying, if you fought and defeated things, demonic spirits, you have enough of the Holy Ghost. You have enough of the Holy Ghost to go home and conquer the things that you battle with with your flesh. I speak against every spirit of addiction. I speak against every stronghold that is rooted in the lust of the flesh. I take full dominion and authority over it. That it would no longer have a foothold. That it would no longer have a grasp. Come on, it's not just a possibility. 
it's a reality it's not just a possibility it's a reality you focus on spiritual warfare but God wants to transfer that same authority and empowerment into mortifying the deeds of the of the flesh Oh, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Lord, you've given us the authority. You've given us the dominion. The Spirit of God is enabling you to be capable of mortifying the deeds of your flesh. The Spirit of God right now is empowering you to say no to the flesh. You don't have to walk another day in defeat. You don't have, my God. Come on, I know the enemy moves through the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the pride of life. But he also moves through condemnation. God wants to take that out completely. You don't have to go another day condemning yourself. Oh, Atayabaha. Come on, it's not about volume. It's about sincerity right now. It's about sincerity. Let the Lord do a work. Somebody just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now with authority. With Holy Ghost authority. Come on. It can be broken tonight. It can be broken tonight. It can be the last day you have to struggle unto him that is able to keep thee from falling his grace his spirit is able is able it is able I want you to bind together with a sister or a brother right now if it's appropriate and would you just begin to claim victory with that person you're binding together with in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus declare victory God is raising an army that is not bound to their flesh. God is raising a body that has the sword of the spirit, not only in spiritual warfare, but in the deeds of the flesh to cut it off. To cut it off. That if our hand defend thee, to cut it off. Find somebody and lay your hand on their forehead. That's it. Pray with authority. Pray over their mind right now. Just begin to lay your hand on their head.
You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. What God is doing when you're laying your hand on their head is he's building a spiritual hedge against the attacks of the enemy and against the lying voices. God is able. God is able. He has already given us the victory. Can we just worship him? He has already given us the victory. Can we worship him? He has already given us the victory. Can we worship him? He has already given us the victory. Thank God who giveth us the victory. Oh, Rianda, Rianda. Oh, Rianda, Ela Mahaya. the same spirit somebody believe that the same spirit say that in faith the same spirit begin to speak that the same spirit the same spirit that can bind the adversary in spiritual warfare is the same spirit that can mortify the deeds of the flesh the same spirit Oh, Rabbi say, for you live after the flesh, he shall die. Put a feet through the Spirit. It's through the Spirit. Oh, Rabbi the same empowerment that you feel when you bind in spiritual warfare and you begin a war in the Spirit. It's that same Spirit that mortifies the deeds of the body. Jesus. I believe there was teaching here, but there also has been impartation. And with impartation comes responsibility. It would be a shame for you to receive that victory, but leave it here. Victory is not meant to be a Sunday service thing. Victory is meant to be an everyday thing. And so I challenge you in the Holy Ghost. What you have received in this place. The impartation always requires responsibility. Always requires responsibility. God has given you something. He has given you responsibility. When God gave the talents to those men. The talents were given. The impartation was given. But with that impartation was also given responsibility. So you have a responsibility to keep your victory. And I want to challenge you. And I want to boost your faith. The flesh, the deeds of the body, it is mortified by the spirit. It is mortified by the spirit. Pastor, is it okay if Dana closes with prayer? Jesus' name. Before Dana... I just want you to realize that every time there's teaching, what was preached Sunday, what's being, what's imparted tonight, there's a testing that comes after. And it reveals where you're at, where we're at. How many of you realize what was the rhema that was preached by the Lord Sunday was to do more, right? And not do more work but do more for the kingdom. There are people that needed to be here, and especially if you're in leadership, that you're not here. You did not pass the test. And so what's imparted tonight, God will test us in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And God commands us to love him, and love is a decision. And if you and I would just receive that, To overcome this is just to love God, to make a decision. So would you right now in Jesus' name just begin to pray and begin to ask for the empowerment that comes through the love of God to make that decision when the testing begins to show up in your life.
in the lust of the flesh, in the lust of the eyes, in the pride of life. I lose your grace, Lord, upon your body in the name of Jesus. I lose your grace to flow through us, Lord, by your spirit that we would pass the test, Lord, that our minds would be transformed in the name of Jesus. That all things would become new in the name of Jesus. With the authority that you have given us in the name of Jesus. I lose your faith upon your body, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to apply the rhema that we have received today. In every aspect of our lives, in the name of Jesus. We receive the faith of the Son of God to do it, Lord, by your grace in the name of Jesus. Let's seal the impartation right now. Let's seal that impartation. Come on, we know there's going to be a test. But the Spirit of God inside the man Christ Jesus was the thing that enabled him to say no to what the enemy was tempting him with. It was only the Spirit of God inside the man Christ Jesus that was the thing that enabled him to say no to the flesh. So by that Spirit, we say yes to the Spirit of God and no to the flesh in the name of Jesus we receive the victory in Jesus name in Jesus name go ahead and high five somebody right now and say you have the victory there is victory in this place God bless you I believe we will have connect group Thursday and Friday you can look at the church website and see what the dates are and the locations but let's go with faith and expectancy because God is going to do more. And if God is doing more, then that means we have to do more as well. Lord bless every single one of you in Jesus' name.